So the Artisan comes in two boxes. It's a three-in-one printer, and there's a box A and B, and A contains all the stuff you're gonna to need to build the printer, and B is the enclosure panels. So in box A, you're first presented with a quick start guide, which has uh, like a wiping cloth, some calibration card and stickers, and then a hefty manual. Um, and this is the quick start guide. So take a little time and read through this to know what you're getting into. So you're gonna need a very large surface to assemble this printer on. This surface is definitely not large enough. We're gonna see how we can make out. So in the assembly instructions here, you'll notice that there's a little blue circle with white lettering and it says A8. So these two components are located in that box. A8 happened to be the second layer of boxes inside the main case. This is A8, we're gonna open it up. So two of these have a Y label on the cable connector here. So we can see Y. These are the Y axis uh, linear modules, they call them. And you might notice this is a little bit beefier than like a 2020 rail or something we'd see on our 3D printers. You know, if you're gonna have a laser engraver, a CNC cutter, a 3D printer all in one, especially for the CNC, you need a lot more heft and strength to the machine. Uh, 3D printers not really under a whole lot of stress. So two of these have Y on that cable connector. Those are the ones we're interested in right now. This one here happens to be the X. So we'll just put him aside. Underneath the box that was A8, there is a layer of packaging and they call this the auxiliary board. And these two little cutouts here are to hold these two modules. And there's little square complete cutouts to hold this piece here. And when we're laying these in here, we want the cables to be facing kind of the, the edge with this little bump out. So they're gonna go like this. Uh, if need be, we'll remove this for now and slide the carriage all the way to this end. The next layer of boxes in here is this very large one, A9. This is the base plate. And this solid metal plate here is going to go on top of the Y rails that we just put in this uh, foam here. And there's little cutouts on the end there. Hopefully you can see them, little square cutouts. That's for the cables to be routed through. Um, so if we flip this over and make sure we remove all of the packaging, then this should be able to sit like this. And like I said, we'll just take these cables and route them up and through these holes here. So as you're feeding these through, just make sure that they're not rotated or kinked or anything. Very gently, gingerly slide them through there. Uh, in a straight through kind of fashion. There are these dowels that help center this where it's supposed to go. And so once those dowels kind of slide in, you'll hear it clunk down um, and you should see the threaded holes all here and there should be you know, no gap between the rails and this base plate. Okay, you might notice that we've teleported into a new location. Um, definitely heed the manual's warning about needing a very large table. The only table we had large enough was our boardroom table. So here we go. Uh, we are now on step five. We've got the base plate situated on top of the two rails and we now have 24 M5 screws. They're M5 by 12 and they're in this bag. So we're gonna install all those in these holes along here and then we'll move on to step six. Okay, on to step six, it's a big step. We're just gonna flip this 180 degrees. Um, so you can kind of grab these handles or grab the middle of it. And I've got it on foam, so I'm not gonna damage or scratch anything. Lift it, flip and then just put it back down. Step seven, so in box A7, there are two linear modules that have the, uh, the cables labeled with Z. So let's get that box and those modules here. So for step eight, we're gonna reach into box B3 and get these plates. They have these little dowel pins that are gonna line them. We've got the two Z axis linear modules here and we're going to make sure that these pins go into the center set of holes here, the unthreaded holes on each of these modules. And when we do that, we're, we need to make sure that these um, little cutout sections are facing up to us. Uh, if we put it down like this, these dowels are too far spaced to actually slide in there. So those just slide in like that. So step nine, we're gonna get more of those M5 by 12 screws that we were using when we attach the rails to the base here. Uh, and we're gonna use four of these on each of these plates to attach them to the linear modules. So in step 10, we're back in the same box where we got these plates from, and there's these two pieces left. These are like the uprights that are gonna hold the Z modules. Um, and this little cutout here in the bottom is for the cables to go through. 
And again, we can see this little centering dowel pin there. So we're gonna have to remove the Velcro on here to be able to feed this through. And this is going to go like this. And we can see the hole here that the dowel is gonna go in. Actually, there's two dowel holes. And so this is gonna go on like this after we've fed the cable through that hole. Just like that. And we're gonna do the same for both of the Z modules. On the back here, there's four screw holes to attach this to the Z module. We're now gonna install those eight bolts, uh, four in each. If you are laying your Zs across them like this, um, just make sure that your dowel pins for the carriage are not pressing in the center here. These center pieces are just very thin metal. They're not meant to have any pressure applied to them and you could dent them if you're not careful. Uh, we're going to be using more of those M5 by 12s, uh, as I said, eight across the two. So step 12, we're now going to turn these upright. And this is the uh, back of the machine. This is where the cables are all coming out. So similarly, we're gonna have these with the cables coming out the back and just set them on top of the dowel pins that are in this base plate here. And then put the cables up there with the rest of them. And so there's two pins here, and those two pins are going in here and here to align us. And then we have four bolt holes in each Z module to affix those to the base plate. Uh, and so I'm just gonna use more of these M5 by 12s, uh, eight total, four on each side. Now, this hole right here, underneath there um, on both sides is a little trickier to get to. Obviously you can drop the screw into the hole as far as it'll go. And if you have Allen keys with the rounded tip on them, it allows you a lot easier to go in on an angle and they're still pretty effective on, on a kind of steep angle like that. Um, squared off ones might be a little tricky. At the very least, I would suggest um, just threading it in to make sure you're not cross threading. Uh, as much as you can by hand, and then just doing the rest by Allen key. Okay, step 13, this is an easy one. I've obviously turned the printer around 180 degrees, so now you're seeing the front here. I'm at the back with all the cables. Um, we're gonna just lower each of these on the Z modules, just move them slowly. There'll be quite a bit of resistance. It says move them to the farthest bottom or end. Step 14, it says go into box A8, which we did earlier, and pull out the X-axis. And you'll know it's the X-axis because the cable here has the X on the, on the end there. So step 15, we're now going to attach the X-axis to the Zs here. Um, these have those dowel pins on them, two on each side. And on the back here, there's little slots for those dowel pins. And on the cable end there, it says up. So with that up orientation correct, this only goes in one way now. You don't have to worry which side, left or right, do the cables come out, because um, you can't flip it this way and still have up facing the correct way. So just slide that onto those dowel pins. There we go. Should be a pretty tight fit. And then for step 16, we're now gonna bolt this in through the back of these plates here. So at the corners, there's holes that I can bolt through. And I'm gonna use M5 by 16. So not the M5 by 12s we've been using thus far. A Little bit longer, M5 by 16s. And four on each side. Okay, so in box A5, which is the box where we've been getting all of our screws from, there is a bag labeled cable clips and filament tube holders or filament tube clips. And inside there, you'll find four little clips like these. Uh, we only need three of them for this step. So we'll take three of those and three M5 by 12s, so back to the 12s again. And these are going to get installed on the back of the uprights and the X uh, rail here. Now I flip the printer around again, of course, so that you can see this. So if you're looking from the back of the machine, on the X rail, the upper right bolt hole here is where we're gonna bolt through. And this is going to go up and over the top of the rail like that. The other two, on the outer side of the uprights, the second hole down is where we're going to bolt through. So that'll be here. And these are going to get installed so that they are like this. And same thing for the other side. It's the second hole down on the outer side and kind of flip the clip towards the center. 
So if we take the cable that's coming off the X-rail off the side of the machine here, and we can confirm that we have the right one, it's labeled X, uh, there's a little yellow sticker on here. There's actually a couple of them. And those yellow stickers indicate where they should be in holders. So this one here is going to come out the side. It's going to go up the back here and we should be able to slide it into this little slot like that. So that's intended to be there. Now the other two here are going to be for the tool head cable. The tool head cable is gonna come out of box A6. So if you hold the cable for tool head, the two ends are identical, but you'll notice that there's yellow markers on one of the kind of sides. There's a bunch of different yellow markers. So closest to the end, there's a sticker with one yellow stripe. That's going to go through here. Line it up with this cable holder and dangle this off this side. And then the sticker with two stripes, we're going to align with the cable clip that we haven't used yet. And we're gonna route this so that it goes up and down this way. So step 19, we're gonna go into the tool head box, which is box A2, and we're going to get the X-axis tool head carrier or tool head plate, um, tool head bracket, they call it. And we're also going to need four of these M5 by 16 tapered um, bolts. I think they call them flathead screws. Uh, so we'll use the four of these in the four corners to attach this to the X carriage. And there's a nice little lip on the back that aligns it with the top of the X carriage. So that makes it very easy. Make sure everything's squared up. Okay, step 20, we're just going to slide the Y axis carriages all the way to the front. And then step 21, we're going to grab box B4, which has all the different support platforms. In the top of box B4, the first one you'll pull out is a glass PEI powder coated print service with the heating element and everything attached to the bottom. But we don't need that one right now. Underneath that, there's this uh, CNC cutter like scratch board um, and it's kind of uh, shrink wrapped with some other bits. So we'll put that aside too. And then finally under that is the laser cutting platform. And the support platform that we actually want is already pre-attached to the bottom of this. So on the front of this, there's a little lever. If you just pull the lever out, you should be able to lift up the front and kind of wiggle it forward and separate the two pieces. Like that. And then this is going to sit on those carriages and we're going to bolt down through here. So line that up and we're going to bolt down with m5 by 16 socket cap screws again so for step 22 all it says is to raise the x axis higher than the triangular supports that we added to the back of the the z linear modules here and that gives us clearance to install the tool head later and they say later because the instructions now flip to setting up the enclosure for the printer. Mm -hmm. 